Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining today. This is your host Nino, inviting you to an episode concerning recapping, that is the change of capacitors, in particular in old technology, and the issues and pitfalls that go along with it and that nobody's telling you about. So here we're having a nice, cute mini CRT. I'm particularly fond of it because of this mini uh, enough normal sized ones, but this is a really handy one. I did not want to bid farewell to it, but it was having one issue in particular, which everybody is attributing to bad or old capacitors. And that was that it produced a shaky image. In other words, everything is displayed as it should, except that it is trembling all the time. So I thought, hey, why not? Let's go ahead and change its capacitors, which are essentially those little, like, or bigger cylindrical thingies all over the place. And unscrewing this thing and looking at it and reaching into it turned out to be indeed the first hurdle. CRTs, and likely a lot of pieces of older technology that you would be curious about, are not exactly pleasant to deal with because they are really three-dimensional. Modern electronic has become more and more two-dimensional. Like if you reach the motherboard, uh, you reach every component quite nicely. But here, a lot of the interesting things are somewhere in the nether, somewhere deeply hidden inside and beyond and under things. And changing these capacitors, which are, you know, somewhere down there, somewhere there hidden, that turned out to be actually a rather challenging, just physically. They, they are really hard to, to grasp. The other thing which I was a bit surprised about is that the whole endeavor needs indeed a lot of space. Because every time you do something, every step of progress that you make, will cause you to find some other subboard, some other subsector of screws, and so on and so forth. So you will find yourself in need of space very, very quickly. Another thing which I have encountered before, but today it became very bad, I just wanted to show you, is I took here, you know, the more refined copper tip for the soldering iron so that when I'm working with it, I'm having a quality tip. So that's the tip used. That's a new tip. Mm, notice something? <laughs> the used tip has a somewhat stranger color here where you can actually see the tip and it is shorter. Why so? Well, because the used tip formed a sort of alloy together with the solder, and that made the tip soft like butter. In fact, I could cut it off and eventually did so with the scalpel. So beware when using copper tips for such tasks as sometimes they're not very sturdy. And you can see that the deed was indeed done here and almost two dozens of capacitors got replaced indeed. However, Despite having collections of capacitors, despite buying extra bigger exemplars and so on and so forth, I also quickly found out you can nearly never be absolutely sure of all the values that you might really need. For I had one capacitor which really looked like all the others and it turned out to be a completely different value. And here you can improvise. Essentially, if you're putting capacitors in parallel, their values can be added. So if you're having, let's say, <laughs> 2200 microfarad, and I don't have such a value, but I have 1000, I can take twice 1000 and once 220 and put them into a parallel conundrum. And really, I'm not sure you can see it down there. 
I, I guess, I guess not, but okay. Somewhere there is such a triple, triple capacitor Frankenstein thing, which however really does work. So improvising missing capacitance values is something you better just get used to as an idea. And the perhaps most spectacularly terrible thing concerns something that you may even see here at the back of the motherboard, that my motherboard was having the unpleasant property of ripping out traces. Yeah, that's something people don't like to, to speak about concerning old electronics that sometimes it's just not as clean as taking out the old component and placing in the new component. For actually here, you can, you can actually see that this is not a ring, this is just a wire coming out. The thing is that the trace itself ripped off together with the old component. I don't know exactly what is causing it, but it was highly unpleasant and happened multiple times. And when it happens, you really just look stupid. This really ruined the entire display, but I found a workaround by finding out that the trace is really leading to a lag in a neighboring chip. And so I just made a little bit of a bridge here with a soldering iron, like a solder bridge, where I just led it directly to the target and did not have to handle with this vanishing trace things. But it was very unpleasant. The other thing is, I mean, <laughs> this is what the back of the motherboard looks like. Like there, this is the small board and on the base, there's a much bigger board. And so, okay, which one is your capacitor, right? Like if you're having a corner case, like, like this one, this little friend here, then you know this little friend is going to be coming out on that side, right? But if it is something like, like one of one of these down there, like particularly these further inside, I'm not sure that you can see them. They are basically over there under the kinescope. These are really playing hide and seek with you because the back of the motherboard, of course, looks maximum disturbing and Therefore, finding which capacitors to change is non-trivial. Of course, I assume you all know there is this trick that if you do not have the exact capacitance value, but you have something better, like more capacitance, higher voltage, <laughs> then you can use that in its stead. In particular, if it is not too far off, then it should have quite similar electrical properties. So this is the reason for this weird thing sticking out of there. There was a there was a more measly part here, but still better than anything else I had. So I just extended a little bit its uh, wires and, and connected a really big, chunky, clunky capacitor over here. So this was, in short, my experience. Now we may just briefly look at the tools I employed in the entire enterprise. So I needed all of them and I just want to record them in case I ever do this again. You definitely need a scalpel in order to wiggle things out, spread apart boards, which then crack open easily. But yeah, go try to do it in any other way. You need a scalpel sometimes in order to force the legs of a capacitor to get into the correct holes in the motherboard. And this really is fine work. So pincers are definitely advisable. Something else, which of course you will need uh, tweezers and wire cutters in order to remove the rest of the elements. I always use against any and all advice a rasp in order to clean up the, hand, the head of my soldering iron sometimes. And yeah, <laughs> you would be more advised to use proper gloves. But yeah, I used kitchen gloves where I was not entirely trusting insulation. <laughs> I mean, better than nothing, right? Okay. So that is it regarding changing capacitors. Prepare and beware 
And now for goodbye, let's check out our little friend. Your most important tool I forgot to mention will certainly be your screwdriver, <laughs> which drove the screws and reassembled our little friend here. And now the monitor from 1991 being connected to a retro laptop is greeting us. Come on, greet us. Haha. <laughs> With, I'm not sure you're noticing, a rather imperfect results. So, the screen is still shaking. Not quite as much as previously, perhaps, but still enough to make you seasick. So, was this seven hour adventure worth it? <laughs> a good question. When entering into such an enterprise, you of course have to consider a return on investment, value of your time, the learning experience, the satisfaction of own curiosity, the enjoyment of the deed itself. There are a lot of factors which come into play when considering whether or whether not to do that. But changing capacitors and even if you change almost two dozen of them, is no magic bullet. Still, I hope you enjoyed today's adventure and I hope to greet you here soon again. For other ones, if you're not yet a member of our friendly club, then please consider becoming a subscriber. Until we meet again, I wish you a wonderful time. Thank you for watching and goodbye.